Brandon Marshall has been a red zone machine this season. He has seven red zone receiving touchdowns, which is the third most in the NFL. He's been targeted 17 times and caught nine of the balls thrown his way. Thanks to him, the Jets have been one of the best red zone teams in the NFL. Earlier this week, Marshall was named the AFC Offensive Player of the Week for his performance against the Giants. He's tied first... He's the first Jets wide receiver since Altoon in 1990 to win the award. I caught up with Marshall Wednesday and asked him about the challenges the team has faced this season. It's been a fight up and down, um, but that's the football. That's the National Football League every single year. There's a lot of ebbs and flows, and uh, you just got to be able to take the good with the bad. Seems like you and Fitzpatrick's connection's been even brighter. What do you think that's been and what's caused it? Just time, you know, um, it just takes time to get on the same page and still going, we're still not where we want to be. Um, we have four games left. We're working really hard to try to bridge the gap between other teams and what other offenses is doing. Uh, but we believe if we can at least do our part and control what we can control, we'll be all right. Todd says the two of you, you've been playing for so long. You guys have found a calm. You guys have been with each other. And that's kind of your passion together. Yeah, I mean, well, we got some great people around us. You know, it's our offensive line makes it easy for us when you have those hogs up front blocking it up and Chris Ivory and Blau Powell running the ball, catching the ball at the backfield. It makes it easier on everybody. And how much fun is it having Eric Decker on the other side of you? Man, I learned that actually in high school. My uncle, you know, he, he heard that I wanted to move to wide receiver and he told me, he said, listen, you always need another guy on the other side. I'll never forget that. And it didn't hit me until I got to college where I really understood that and I had Mike Sims Walker and it was just a tag team. And it's it's funner that way too. I mean, it helps. Selfishly, you want someone on the other side because they can take the pressure off of you and take the double and the, cut and the roll coverage. But then it's fun doing it together with someone else. What has Eric taught you? What has he taught me? Oh, man. You know, he hasn't taught me anything, but he pushes me every day. Um, yeah, he taught me about, you know, Hollywood and country <laughs> music. He taught me that. He's very good at that. Yeah. No, Eric has taught me some things as far as in route running. He's a really good route runner. Um, but um, I would say that route, there's some things in route running. Um, but the, the main thing is how we push each other. Like we drop a ball, we're the first one to jump, jump on each other's back and make, make each other do push-ups and film room. In the film room, you know, if somebody take the wrong step, we're calling each other out. So it's fun. You became the first Jets receiver since 2007 to get 1,000 yards. Has that hit you yet? Uh, yeah, I'm not really thinking about that. And to be honest, I mean, I don't understand what the big And you deal did it with four different teams. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, uh, I just want those yards and those touchdowns to equal more wins. How are, you, how are you approaching these next four weeks? How do you make sure the game against Tennessee isn't a trap game for you guys? You've been in this league a long time, and you you understand this. I think trap games are usually beginning of the season. We know what time it is now. Uh, we had those games already. They're the number eight defense in the league right now, and they're very feisty, very physical. They just put up 40 points on offense. So it's just, this is far from a trap game.